Welcome to Kyoto, the cultural heart of Japan. This city is filled with Buddhist temples and Shinto shrines, and we've come for two of the most visited to debate which one is the better experience. It's a battle of the temples. The debate will give you some insight into what it's like to be a tourist in Kyoto and what to look for. Kansai resident Kevin Riley is here with me to debate the highlights. The two Zen Buddhist temples we're comparing are Ginkakuji, the Silver Pavilion, and Kinkakuji, the Golden Pavilion. Both have similar styles but offer different experiences. Kyoto has roughly 2,000 temples and shrines. Kinkakuji to the west and Ginkakuji to the east really are on opposite sides of the city. Kyoto, we're back again. Yes, we are. This is Kevin Riley. Hi. And where are we? <laughs> <laughs> We're sitting on the Kamo River in Gion, downtown Kyoto. This is a really nice location. It's very different because my, my image of Kyoto is temples and shrines. I think that's most people's image, yeah. But there's a lot more to Kyoto than that. What makes it stand out to you? Nature, a lot of nature, a lot of beauty. I mean, you know, we're sitting here on a river with trees. Uh, and we're surrounded by nature all around Kyoto. So to me, Kyoto is a place where the natural world is connected with culture, the spiritual world. It's yes. a place where man has made a beautiful place surrounded by its nature. And we see that in the temples and shrines that we visit. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And they're all, a lot of them are around the outside skirts into the nature itself. Kinkakuji and Ginkakuji. And although it's not a very Buddhist thing to do, but we pitted them against one another for yeah. battle to see which one is worth going to. First, we went to Kinkakuji. Always start the day at Kinkakuji when no one is there because once the gates open at 9, it's a totally different situation. Many sources rank this as Kyoto's most visited attraction, and you can tell by the crowds of Japanese and international tourists. Entry is 400 yen. It doesn't take long to arrive at the most photographed spot in Japan. The top two floors of the three-story golden pavilion are covered with pure gold leaf. Most people start snapping photos right away. It's a stunning sight to behold. Definitely make your way further in for the best spot before the other tourists get there first. After a couple of minutes, the area becomes very congested. That zen-like silence broken by crowds of students and guided tours. It was originally built here in 1397, and over time, the gold leaf exterior wasn't cared for. It was hardly visible in the mid-19th century. The building you see today was actually reconstructed in 1955, after burning down in 1950 by arson. The roof ornament is a bronze phoenix. The gold pavilion houses Buddhist relics. There is no entry to the building. For the great majority of tourists, there's not much else to this temple. It's crowded from open to close, and finding that important connection to nature is limited to the first few minutes after those doors open to the public. I spent 25 minutes here before I felt like I'd seen enough. Kevin and I visited on a rainy day, arriving 30 minutes early. Even in the rain, the place was crowded at opening. This is pretty crazy. We're, we're here right when it opens, and yet there's already a huge line of people. Yep. Oh, it's actually quite beautiful with the rain on the lawn. I thought there were going to be less tourists because of the <laughs> yeah. rain. Yeah. Actually, uh, school kids here, which, yeah. uh, you know, on a Sunday. <laughs> on a Sunday. <laughs> Poor kids never get a day off. Um, for me, I think Kinkakuji is one of those places that you take a picture at, right? Yeah, or just go buy a postcard. <laughs> you just buy a postcard. <laughs> but it, it's, it's the picture that everybody wants to take. That area where we first enter, that is 
the picture. And yeah. to me, that's why I give this three and a half out of five stars. All right, I'm gonna give it three because it was the, the, it, the way it looked on that day. I, I don't wanna go there in, on a sunny day. So <laughs> a sunny day, how many stars would you give it on a sunny day? I'd probably knock it down to two then. Two out of five? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's still got some beautiful architecture and all that, and I like the little trees, but uh, yeah, too many people. Japan has four seasons, winter, spring, summer, fall. Each season is, makes the city different, makes the attractions seem different. There's also weather. Yesterday's weather, when we went to Kikakuji, was awful. It was, well, it, I, I love the rain, but when you're in the rain, walking around in it, it's not as much fun. Our the, boots are still wet today. Our boots are still wet today. This was just 24 hours ago. <laughs> the bright side of that, ironically, was that the rain made the colors pop. And what you're saying with the colors is dead on. I. I I thought because it was cloudy, the lighting was more diffused. And if you're taking a picture, with, you, you might want the blue sun just like it is on the postcard. But what we saw was, I think, even better. Uh, I've always preferred cloudy days for pictures. After that, we went to Ginkakuji, which is called the Silver Pavilion, Silver Tea House, the Silver Temple, or just Ginkakuji, as we would <laughs> yeah. say in Japanese. <laughs> a different experience. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, now, that... that to me, satisfies my need for wabi sabi. Okay. You know, it's old. It's 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 not silver. Okay. It's wood. It's old aged wood, and it's got those beautiful windows. And yeah, I I really like Ginkakuji. The Ginkakuji experience. It's located on the east side of the city, a 45-minute bus ride from Ginkakuji. The surroundings are different. A sand garden called Sea of Silver Sand is one of the main elements to the temple grounds. A mound of sand representing Mount Fuji really stands out within the natural setting. This is called the Silver Pavilion because the original plans were to cover the building with silver foil. The design was inspired by King Kakuji and completed in 1490 by Japan's 8th Shogun, but not completed before his death. It was then that the Vio turned into a Zen Buddhist temple. The pond is smaller but the grounds have much more vegetation, allowing the visitor to feel closer to nature. The area around Ginkakuji has some amazing mosses. It's easy to feel at ease here, On the day that Kevin and I arrived, it was not an ideal time to visit. The price of entry is 500 yen. <laughs> All right, so we're here. This is the Silver Shrine. Your initial thoughts? Very wet. <laughs> very, very wet. But the rain made Ginkakuji feel more alive, running water off the roof, movement all around. The greens were even greener. The weather didn't affect the sand garden much. There's a pleasant view of the entire ground from a hill in the forest. Rainy days might not be the best time to visit, but it sure makes the colors more vibrant and the sound of the falling rain very soothing.
Location, location, location. Oh, yeah. yeah. Inkakuji is just, it's on the east side, right? Yep. So, on the east side, that's where Kyu Mizudera is, that's where Han Jingu is, that's where, well, actually, Gion, this, this area is not that far away if you walk along the Philosopher's Path. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is also one, the end of Philosopher's Path is Ginkakuji. It's, it's just so much more convenient than King, King Kakuji, isn't it? Are, are we giving a lot of stars over here to King Kakuji and uh, King Kakuji? I'm sorry, I think guys. so. <laughs> it, it's hard not to just because if you're on a day trip and you don't have a lot of time, you can hit so many temples and shrines yeah. on the east side. You're going to include King Kakuji to it. If you, if you don't have a lot of time, it takes so much time to get to King Kakuji, especially in the middle of the day when there's a lot of traffic. Yeah, there's no be. subway to get there. so. And there's nothing else to do there. Uh, did you see a street where we went up to go up to Ginkakuji? Yeah. And you got all these little stores and they got cool little things on the that side. That was nice. Yeah, you know, stuff like that. Uh, it just adds so much more, I think, to somebody's trip when they're coming here. Yes. To be able to see all that. If, if we have to compare, <laughs> and, you know, battling is not a Buddhist thing, however, let's put them head to head now. All right. Ginkakuji versus Ginkakuji, we've kind of broken it down for you. And I think if you've been listening to us, you also know where we're going to go with this. <laughs> Which one do you pick? Well, Ginkakuji. Ginkakuji two here. Thumbs two thumbs up for Ginkakuji. <laughs> we put together our list of the top five suggested temples and shrines to visit in Kyoto. Here's mine, and here's Kevin's. We both agreed on Kiyomizudera, Fushimi Inari, and Ginkakuji. If you'd like a closer look at Fushimi Inari, I made a video on it a few years ago, and I highly recommend visiting at night because it's open 24 hours a day. There's no end to the debate between Kevin and I on Kyoto. But what did you think? Which attractions in Kyoto were your favorites on your list to visit? Share your stories in the comments below. And enjoy your time in Kyoto, Japan. Next time, the art of candy making called Amezaiku, which has been a part of Japanese festivals for generations. But the craft is fading away. I visit a shop in Yanaka in Tokyo that is preserving the traditions. If you liked it, hit that subscribe button and check out another one of our shows. Don't miss my second live streaming channel, Only in Japan Go. And check out location photos on Instagram. Mata ne.